Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. As you read the scriptures, and, and if you were here saying I was talking about CUD, you guys remember CUD? What does the C stand for? Nobody remembers. God bless you. Wow. Wow. Did anybody come to church on Sunday? Who came to church? That's sad. Okay, cud, chewing, undoes, doubt. Wow. I keep my messages so simple you can't remember that. That is so sad. That's okay. Praise God. That's what rewind is for, right? <laughs> Go to live stream and listen to the message again. God wants us to chew. He wants us to chew on his word. There's a reason he wants us to chew on his word. I love the fact that when, when you read the Bible, when you read the scriptures, and I pray that in, in these next few weeks, we're going to stir up some hunger in the word. And, um, and we're going to get back. If you've kind of fallen off the wagon from reading your Bible, if you've fallen off the wagon of faith, we're going to get you right back on because the word is the answer. I'm telling you. Um, Jesus was very creative. And I want to talk about this. Jesus was very creative in, in the way he shared his messages. He, he desired that the people who heard him um, would walk away understanding the message he was trying to bring or deliver. He was very creative. For example, uh, if he wanted to talk about what faith is, he would grab a child and he would sit the child in his lap and he would say, faith is like a child. Why would he say that? Well, he was trying to explain the fact that, you know what, when, when children are small, when they're young, they believe anything. I don't know about you, but with Isaac and Alexis, I used to tell them all kinds of bedtime stories that weren't true. And they, like I told them I was a pilot. I told them that the moon was made out of cheese and that I had a bite of it. And they're like, wow. And, you know, they just believed it. And, they, and you know, don't hate, okay. It was a bedtime story. That's the only way to get them to bed. I had a, uh, you run out of things to say. And so they would believe everything I would say to them, right. And uh, that's what Jesus was saying. I wish that, that you as a grown adult would have childlike faith illustration another example he took uh, uh, you know what uh, uh, his disciples and he preached on a mountaintop and there was 5,000 people there then he looks at his disciples and says you feed them and they're like uh, we can't Jesus already knew that they couldn't feed them he knew that but he wanted them to understand that he was the bread of life and so you know what he does he says okay well why don't you go ahead and bring me what you do have and they said well we have these bread and we have this fish and he says perfect you see Jesus was trying to teach him a lesson that without me you can't but with me you can right and so there's different stories in the Bible that Jesus used as illustrations that help us really understand the word of God. We'll take Lazarus. Remember Lazarus whom he loved, the Bible says, right? His sisters come. They say Lazarus is at the point of death. He's sick. Jesus takes an extra few days, three days. He shows up. Jesus knew that he would be dead. He shows up on the scene. We see that Jesus now is weeping as he's looking at this at this, uh, uh, this tombstone or that's rolled over his, his grave, and, and he begins to weep. You know what was happening? Jesus did that on purpose to give everyone an illustration. He kept talking to the disciples. Hey, guys, there's going to come a day that I'm going to die on a cross for your sins. But then they're going to bury me. But check this out. On the third day, I'm going to be resurrected. They couldn't get this, right? He kept reminding them, Tom. They're like, oh, be quiet. You'll never die. You're going to be with us forever. Well, guess what? He always tried to bring clarity to his message. And you know what? That story, you know what that tells us? Jesus says, hey, listen, I can take any dead place in your life and bring it back to life. I can take any situation in your life and I can turn it around for you. And we know the story of Lazarus. He said, come forth. And we know that he came out looking like a mummy, right? And they say, he said, unwrap that dude. Come on, bring up, feed him now. God wants to turn things around in your life and my life. And so tonight I want to talk about no problem. What do I mean by that? Well, when you, when you, when you read the Bible and you see what Jesus thought about no problem or, or worry, he he had a very interesting thing to say. He said to people with problems, he says, look at the birds. You guys remember that story where he says, look at the birds. It's like, 
Jesus, what does a bird have to do with my problem? And he just says, hey, check them out. And I love it because when you think about problems, let me just tell you how Jesus thinks so that you guys have a better understanding of this. You guys ready? So the first thing, of course, he'd always say, do you have a problem? Right? And most people will say a few things, right? They'll say either what? Yes. Or they'll say what? No. Okay. So check this out. Because I want you to understand, when you read the scriptures, you want to be able to have a, a understanding of what God is trying to say. If not, you're always trying to find some other avenue, some other solution, and you get, you're getting further away from the answer instead of realizing that every single problem has already been solved through God's word. It has everything. It, 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 has, it has the antidote to uh, having a thriving marriage. It has the antidote of having a thriving business. It has the antidote of, of seeing miracles take place. I mean, anything... You want to talk about raising children? It has the answers on how to raise your children, etc. Okay? So Jesus is saying, hey, listen, do you have a problem? And we say either yes. And then the next question, he says, can you do something about it? That's another question, right? And let's say that you say yes. And you know what he says? He says then, don't what? Don't worry. Right? So he says, okay, don't worry. Don't worry. This is how God talks, okay? Are you guys with me so far? Okay, so check this out. But then, if someone says, you know what? No, I'm good right now. Like maybe some of you are sitting here saying, you know, no, I'm good. I have no problems. Man, life is good right now, man. I'm paying the bills. I got a little extra money saved. Things are well. Family's good. Kids are doing great. And no, I have no problem. You know what Jesus says? He says, then don't, then don't worry. Awesome. Don't worry. Check this out. But then let's just say, you say, do you have a problem? Uh, yes. Uh, can you do something about it? <laughs> no. And you know what Jesus says? Well, don't worry about it. <laughs> that, that's, that's how Jesus talks about the problems, the challenges, and the worries. And he looks at his disciples and he's talking to a group of people that are having some worry issues. They're worried about paying the bills. They're worried about their future. How are we going to live? How are we going to survive? For those that maybe you're elderly and you're just like, well, how, how am I going to have enough money to support myself? You know, some of us right now, we have kids that are about to go off to college. I have number two about to go out to college. I'm, I get freaked out a little. I'm like, how am I going to do that? My daughter's college was expensive. Here we go. Number two's going, right? But you know what? Jesus will always respond, don't worry. Easier said than done, huh? I mean, you, you think that's easy, Jesus? He's like, yeah, that, it, that's exactly how it is. It's that easy. I would, so if you have a problem and you can do something about it, no worry. If you have a problem and you can't do nothing about it, don't worry. Everybody go like this. Don't worry. No, do it with some attitude. Come on. Don't, don't worry. So the next time your spouse comes in there and says, oh, my God, how are we going to pay the bills? Don't worry. Wouldn't that be so much easier if we did that? Watch this. So Jesus says, he says to a problem, he says, look at the birds. I want you to go with me real quickly. Go with me to Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. I love this verse here. But we're going to go ahead and unpack this thing just a little bit more. He says, therefore, I tell you, do not, y'all can work with me, ready? Do not worry about your life. So he starts off with your whole life in general. Do not worry about your life. Do not worry about your life. Don't worry about your life. But most often, we're worrying about our life constantly. We're worrying about everything. And so Jesus hits every single aspect of our life he hits every challenge he says don't worry i messed up 
Don't worry about it. We can fix a mess. Okay, so he says, don't worry about your life, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds. There, there's his illustration. Check out the birds. And all the disciples went, yeah. He said, yeah, look at the bird. When was the last time you looked at a bird? Have you noticed we most often don't look at a bird? But Jesus is, is finding something that we see as meaningless, but he brings it back and he says, no, it's meaningful. Everything God creates is meaningful. And he says, look at the birds in the earth. They don't even sow. They don't even reap. They don't even store away barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can anyone of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? <laughs> in other words, what are you going to, if anything, when you worry, you are subtracting peace. You are subtracting joy. You are subtracting relationship. You, are, you know what you're doing too? When you worry, you are subtracting brain cells. Yeah, you know, you're, you're less creative when you're always worrying. Why? Worry weighs you down. God said, I called you to be a warrior, not a worrier. <laughs> Always worrying about everything. He says, we got to talk about this. And he, and, he, and he says, hey, listen, can any one of you, he's being very clear, can any of you, any of you people here, by word, add even a single hour to your life, are you going to add an extra? I always hear this. I don't have enough time. We all get 24 hours. That's the bottom line. All of us do. Now, how you manage that, that's your deal. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers, there's another illustration, the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor and sp or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how clothes, if that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, look at this. Oh, you of what? <laughs> what did we talk about Sunday? What kind of faith did he say? No. Weak. Oh, ye of weak faith. Oh, ye of little faith. Oh, ye of strong faith. There's little faith. There's weak faith. There's strong. There's different levels of faith. So he's telling these worriers, <laughs> you know what your problem is? Your problem is faith. When, when you are no longer developing your faith muscle, how does faith come? Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and by hearing and by hearing the word of God. That's how you develop faith. So Jesus is saying, you're worried because you lost some faith. You got little faith. You're more, you're more consumed with the worry than you should be consumed with the one who has the answer, the one who provides. Look what he keeps saying. He says, so do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear for the pagans? Run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you what? That you need them. So I want you to think about this. I want you to think about maybe any single problem that you have right now. God knows what you need for that. He knows exactly what you need for that situation. What happens is we prolong ourselves with the worry because we don't realize that God is the answer to every single problem. We have to start being a little bit more mature in our relationship and how we grow with God by actually taking the time and really researching and finding out what God thinks about your situation right now. In other words, whatever you're dealing with right now, for example, if someone has cancer, my first question would be, what scripture are you wrapping around that cancer that the word can go ahead and just squeeze the death out of that? Because he's resurrection life. Right? And we know that Peter walked on, on what? A word or water? water. He, no, he walked on a word. <laughs> yeah, because the physical sense, we say, yeah, he's on water. Yeah, he did walk on water, but he walked on the word when Jesus said, come. So you have to figure out what word 
am I going to walk on that's going to help me overcome my worry? Because this is, if you want to be mature in reading the Bible, realize what Jesus is saying. Why, why are you worrying? Do you have a problem? Yes. Can you do something about it? Well, we'll talk about what you can do about it. Okay, that's something that you guys can do. He says, okay, well, then don't worry. Can you do something about it? No, I can't. Well, don't worry. That's amazing how he thinks about this. But we got to get that revelation. Okay, God, so what do you have to say about my problem? What is it? I have about 100, and I've shared it only for the few people that actually had the wisdom to come ask me for it. After dealing with cancer, I got like probably about 142 healing scriptures. And, and there's just scriptures that I have just, ah, I've hit them hard, hit them hard, hit them hard. You got to wrap the word of God. I obviously have no cancer. I obviously am alive. Who gets the glory? God gets the glory. Because let me tell you something. My doctors clearly said, man, there's nothing we did that was, that was able to get you to this place. Now, yes, we did surgery. We pulled it out. But, man, God did, God did something. They called me the miracle man. They couldn't explain it. How did that work? The word of God. How'd you do that, Mauricio? Man, you see these scriptures every single day. People would walk in my room and they would quote the scriptures over my life. The word. And so Jesus looks at these warriors and he says, hey, listen, you know what your problem is? You have a faith problem. You see, because when you work on your faith, faith will always overcome stress, anxiety, and any kind of worry. When you begin to apply faith to it, you know what he says? As a matter of fact, here's another illustration. Jesus looks at the mountain, and he says, do you see that big mountain over there? And all his disciples like, yeah. He says, man, well, check this out. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move that mountain. In other words, Jesus says, hey, listen, if you can just believe, if you can just have a, just start with a little bit of belief, okay, in this situation, God can get me out of this. He says, you can see some big stuff happen. But we have to really come to the place where we are growing constantly our faith. Now, I know this is a simple message, but let me tell you something. Simple is, is gone from the church. It literally is. Everybody wants to find another way of getting out of their situation. But let me tell you something. We need to get back to the way. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. And no one <laughs> gets their breakthrough without me. Amen. Period. Period. And so if we're going to start seeing some victory, then we need to start getting back to our faith. Because our faith, as a matter of fact, I was teaching my staff on Sunday. I'm like, think about it, guys. You know what? We're all trying to please God. But the only way you can please God is found in Hebrews 11.6. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God, what? Must believe that he is God and that he's a what? rewarder of those who what diligently do what seek him so think about it when i'm caught up in my worry i'm pleasing my worry I, i'm pleasing the enemy by being worried constantly you literally have to come to the place where you take on the dna of jesus and he says don't worry about it yeah, but this, but this is the situation. Don't worry about it. God's going to, now, do I, am I saying don't worry and do nothing? No, you better don't worry and read something. And as you read something, what God does is he gives you what's called the spirit of wisdom and revelation. All of a sudden, as you're reading the word of God, but what does Matthew chapter 5 have to do with my answer? You just read the word, the Holy Spirit will begin to reveal some things to you. And all of a sudden, he starts giving you an idea. The light bulb will go off like, oh my God. That's why I always keep a journal next to my Bible. You know why? Every time I read, I always get ideas for the church or ideas for something in the family, the business, something. I get ideas like, oh, why? Because the word is full of life. He says, I am the bread of life. In other words, you just hang out with the bread of life, dude, you're going to be super blessed. You know, there's certain people that you know, like there's a good friend of mine. The dude is, he's booga wealthy. I know that if I hang out with him, he'll never let me pay. It just doesn't happen. Why? The dude has got money. He's just, so I know that when I'm with him, <laughs> we're going to go anywhere. And I don't have to worry about paying anything. And it's not because I'm cheap, because I'm not. I love paying. 
I, I'm always the first. I have to hide credit cards and give them to the, uh, the, the, the waiters or the waitresses before we get there just to pay for meals. But, but check this out. But when I'm with him, it's just impossible. It's, you just don't worry. That's what Jesus says. You start spending time with me, you'll start, you'll start having less worry. Not that you won't have worry because challenges will come. But the more you hang with me, the less worry you're going to be. But what do you do? When you hang with me, Jesus says, then I start helping you grow in this area called faith. And faith is your currency to get you through whatever situation you're, you're facing right now. Faith. But without faith, it's impossible. It is impossible to please God. You'll never get to that place. And I have to share this message today because I keep hearing it over and over. Christians are like, they're struggling, but it's like, oh, they want to hear something else. And it's like, no, it, it's the word. We got to get back to the word. The word is the answer. Come on, you stand on the word. You stand firm. When I've done all to stand, I've done everything, Pastor Modi. Okay, so what does God say? You stand there for. You keep standing. But I haven't seen nothing happen. You keep standing. You keep standing. You keep believing. You keep declaring. You keep proclaiming. You keep speaking life. And let me tell you something. Eventually, there's going to be something that's going to come forth. And you will see some amazing things. But, but you got to get that word back inside. Amen. You got to get that word inside of you. You got you to chew on it. You got to meditate on my word day and night. Meditate on my word day and night. Meditate and chew on it. Chew on a word until it becomes life in you. And you watch and see. You'll start seeing some amazing, amazing things. And then, so then he tells us, now this is what you do within the same context of Matthew chapter 6. The very next verse in Matthew 6, verse 33. Okay, same story. And he says, now this is what you got to do. He says, but what? Man, I'll be honest with you. When I got problems, I start thinking about what friend am I going to call first, right? When I'm in trouble, I'm like, ooh, who knows how to get me out of this bind? And it's like, Jesus like, see, that's your problem. He's like, why didn't you seek me first? See, you went talking to your grandma, your uncle, your cousin, you know, sister tell it all, uncle drink a lot. And, and they gave you some weird stuff, right? And God's like, listen, here's the answer. You got to seek me first. Like, what, did you even ask me what I think about the situation? But seek first the kingdom. Seek first the king. What's the kingdom? His word. The word governs your life. It's the word of God that governs me. You know what? Yes, I live in the United States. Yes, I have a government that I respect and I, and I honor, etc. But guess what? But the word of God governs my life because the government does some things that does not line up with God's word. So the word governs my life. And so God says, I need you to come back to the place. When you seek me, let me govern the next step that you're going to take in order for you to see some success. So he says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, man, they'll be given to you as well. Huh? How about that? What if we really started getting a revelation that, you know what, I think we would have more and more happier Christians. Have you noticed that more, most Christians are, are sad all the time? Have you noticed that or no? I meet them all the time. I do it every week. Every week. Like, what's wrong with you? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, well, man, have you, have you prayed? No. <laughs> um, do we go to the same church? Like, we just talk about this on Sunday. Kind of like when I told you guys, what's good? Literally like a cow staring at headlights, right? <laughs> we don't know. That, but, but, but think, think. That's the problem with the church today in America. We're so darn spoiled with social media that we're just good hearers, but not good doers like James chapter 1 says. You're hearers, but you don't do nothing about it. Jesus is giving us the formula. And we don't do nothing. It's the formula. It's the answer. Every single thing that Elevate Church has done has been by faith. All of it. From the very beginning to this very moment to what we're about to experience in the next year. It's all by faith. By faith. How would you do that, Pastor? It's by faith. Can't explain it, but I know that God is faithful, but 
But we've been proclaiming the word, been speaking the word, and then all these things were added to us. Therefore, do not worry. Look at that. He brings back to worry. Do not worry about what? Tomorrow. He says, man, for tomorrow will worry about itself. And so many of us, we're so jacked up with thinking about tomorrow when you ain't even living today. No wonder we're so unhappy. Why? You're living in your future. How is that, how is that working for you? We're living in our future. We're, we're living, we're living a, a, a future with uncertainty, right? But today is certain right now. This moment, it is, it is for sure. Why? You're in it right now. Right now, this is your moment. You have to learn how to own your moment, embrace this moment right now. And let tomorrow worry about itself. Today is sufficient. I don't know about you, but I have enough situations and problems I got to deal with today. So when people say, well, what do I do? He's right, Tom, you got to put one foot in front of the other. That's what you do. It's, it's one step at a time. Just, just, you just don't give up. You keep going. But we got we to gotta make sure that we're seeking first the kingdom of God. Because I get it. When you're going through something, it literally jacks you up. You feel like you're just being stretched. And you're, you're going to, you feel like, I'm a break. But Jesus says, hey, listen, but I don't want you to worry about tomorrow. Because tomorrow will worry about itself. Look, he even gives you the answer. I'm telling you, Jesus is saying in the red, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. Each day has enough problems of its own. Wow. What if we dissected that verse? What if you read that verse for the next month? I wonder what it would do to you. You'd be less worried. You would. I promise you. When I was in the hospital, 30 days, all I did every day... You didn't walk in my room. There was never television in my room. I didn't watch TV. You see, until you're ready for change, nothing's going to change. And let me tell you something. People don't change until there's pain. Sometimes you need forced change. <laughs> and so in the room, never any TV in my room. Never. The only thing in my room, word. My brother was an atheist when he would come visit me. And you know what I told him? Dude, if you're going to come to my room, you know, my brother, okay, atheist. Mr. Don't ever talk to me about God or Jesus. Always is my brother. I love him, okay? But I told him, dude, if you're going to come visit me, you're going to read my Bible, and I'm going to lead you where to read. I'd be like, okay, go to Psalms 91. <laughs> I'm like, read it. Uh, and because I'm so good at knowing my word, when he would make a mistake, I'm like, no, because I was in pain. I was in a lot of pain being sick in the hospital. I'm like, no, that's not the way it says it. And he's like, okay, sorry. But it's amazing when you put so much word in your spirit, what comes out when you're squeezed. See, what, what comes out of you when you're being squeezed with life? Of course, now my brother is a Christian, and he's a leader in his church, and, man, he's got his own small group, and. It's ridiculous. And he remembers one night. He's like, you yelled at me. I'm like, good. <laughs> you, you, you needed a good yelling, bro. What's wrong with you? But, but you know why? Because I knew that the word was the answer for my breakthrough. The doctors made it clear, we can't do nothing anymore. Are, are you guys understanding this? I know it's simple, but it's amazing how much we miss out of simple. Why do we have to do this? Why, does he, why is Jesus talking to us about this? Well, look at quickly. Hebrews 1038. I'm almost done. He says this. He says, now the just shall live by what? Faith. It's not an option. It's how you live. The just shall live by faith. But if anyone what? Draws back. If anyone draws. And you know, when you worry, you draw back. You draw back. You can tell when someone is going through something and, and there's no Jesus in the midst of it. They start isolating themselves. They draw back. When you start drawing back, you know there's a faith issue in that department. There's, you draw back. I don't, I need, I need to step down. I can't serve anymore. You're drawing back. Oh, I, 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 I can't go and do that. You're draw, stop drawing back. He says, if you're going to walk with me, you're the just. You've been justified by God. You've been justified righteous regardless of what you've experienced. And he says, and now you are to live by faith. The just shall live by faith. How am I going to see my career explode and be even more awesome? Faith. 
How am I going to see my family be restored? Faith. How am I going to go ahead and elevate the way I think and renew the way my, my thinking is now? Faith. Everything is faith. It's your currency. And the only way to, to, to withdraw that currency is to seek first the kingdom of God. God is your, he's your ATM machine and your card. Come on, that is your faith. You got to invest in God. You got to invest in the word of God. And then you know what the numbers are? Your little pin code number. That's what verse are you going to read today? And then you start withdrawing what rightfully belongs to you. But you'll never be able to withdraw unless you press in. Press in. Get that word back in your spirit. Come on, fall in love with the word again. Faith replaces fear and worry with peace and joy. Look at what it says. Or you can be this person that keeps doing this. Look, the word, it even, it even exposes you. Look at this verse right here, Psalm 77.3. I would write this one down if I were you. you you're, I bless you. Get a tattoo that says this. He says, I complained. And my spirit was what? You wonder why you, you have anxiety? Because you're always stuck complaining about your situation. You're complaining. You're unhappy. Um, what's wrong with you? I'm mad at God. Why are you? What, what? You're complaining. You ask yourself, why am I overwhelmed? Why am I overwhelmed? Because complaining will overwhelm you with anxiety, with fear, with worry. Huh? That's what that does. That's why he says... You need to be seeking God first right now. When you wake up, seek God first. For some of you, maybe you already wake up super early because of work. Well, guess what? Then you know what? Then figure out a time throughout the day somewhere, but you're seeking him first before you're seeking your mom on the phone, your friends. Hey, what do you think? What do, man, seek God. God, what do you think? I wonder what would happen if we would start presenting most of our problems to God. I bet we would start seeing some greater breakthrough, right? What you did for eight weeks right, with calling everybody and their mother, man, you could have done in maybe two days of just seeking God and asking God, what do you think about this situation? And then you start digging in the scriptures and you let the word give you the answer. That's what God wants to do with us here. I hope you're getting something out of this. Because here's the reality. You and I, you don't have the power. You don't have the strength to change some of the things we go through. You just don't have that. And you know what? Until you come to that conclusion, you're, ne you're never going to come to the place of having a rhythm with God. And when I say rhythm, in other words, God wants you to have a rhythm with him. Come on, you're dancing with God and you're not stepping on his toes or you're, you have a rhythm with him. God needs us to get in rhythm, in alignment with him. And so when things come, you're not depending on your power. You're not depending on your strength. You're not depending on your might. You're depending on God. Why? Because I seek him first about the situation, and then he begins to give me the guidance I need. Look at what this scripture says. Zechariah, look what he says in verse 4, 6. He says, so he said to me, a message from the Lord came to Zerubbabel. It's a jacked up name, huh? The Lord said, your strength will not get my temple rebuilt. And so many times we're putting in our strength. We're putting in our might. And listen, I love effort, but first seek the kingdom of God, then put in the effort, right? Because his power, his might, his spirit will then give you the strength to overcome whatever you need. But he says this. He says, your strength will not get my temple rebuilt. Your power will not do it either. Only the power of my spirit will do it, says the Lord, who rules over all. Come on, only the Lord. Only the Lord. Only the Lord. I want you to just kind of see this. Uh, can you fix that up there real quick? I want to show you guys something because you know what? Some of you right now, you realize that, you know what worry does? You're like a bow with worry. And what worry does, it, it just begins to do this to you. It just starts uh, stretching you and stretching you. And then you're just like, uh, you're just in pain. Worry is a stretch. It's a stretch. It's a stretch. And you just are like, I don't know how much more I can take. I feel like I'm going to lose my, have you ever said that? I feel like I'm going to lose my mind. You know why? Because you're worried. You're stressed. You're afraid. What are we going to? And so, and that's okay. You know what? God's, that's why God gave you stretchy pants in your faith. 
Because he's like, I, I don't mind you stretching. It's okay. You're good. You're good. Well, guess what? He made you to be a bow. It's okay. You're going to be stretched. Well, I feel like I'm always stretched. Well, man, when I see people that are always stretched, I always realize this. Man, God's calling your life must be huge. Because the enemy has like a target on you and he's always hitting you. There must be something big that the enemy knows. Now, he may not know the details. He knows there's something great about you. He just doesn't know what that great is. He did, but he knows the reason you're constantly being hit is because there's something that the enemy doesn't want you to see. Because God forbid you ever see what God wants to do with your life. Because if you ever had that revelation of what he wants for your life, look out world. Things are going to change. Things are going to get better. I really believe that's a word for you. And so you kind of feel like that target. Well, there's a reason for that. But that's okay. That's okay. Stretch. Let him stretch you. It's no big thing. Let him stretch. Let him stretch. That's all right. But you know what faith is? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Faith is my arrow. <laughs> Say it with me. Faith is my arrow. It's your arrow. See, think about it. God wants this arrow to be received, first of all, by you. Then he wants you to take the arrow he gave you, and he said, now if you what? Speak to this mountain, and you say to it. So God says, Mauricio, don't worry about the stretch. Don't worry. Because I can use the worry and we can use it to do something more awesome. And you know what he does? So we know how the arrow works, right? I hope. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm freaking out. Oh, no, don't freak out. I'm good. I'm good at this. Don't trip. I just bought this one. It's the first time I'm about to shoot it. Don't worry. I ain't afraid. Anybody? I'm just kidding. So here's what God says. He says, okay, chill out. Y'all crazy. Look, 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 look. So you know what God says? I want you to point your worry. Here's your worry, the bow, your worry. I want you to learn how to point your worry to me. That's why he says, that's why he says, cast your cares on me. Because what? I care for you. So, so you know what? I'm worried. He says, okay, now I want you to aim. Okay, I'm aiming. He says, but I gave you something called faith. And I want you to shoot. You see, when you learn to be stretched, all you have to do with that worry is you got to start seeking God again. And you have to start pointing it back at him. And you have to say, you know what? That's okay. I'm being stretched. I'm overwhelmed. I've been complaining. But now I'm going to use it as a weapon. I'm going to take what the enemy meant for bad. I'm going to use it for something good. And then you know what you do? Is you start getting in that place. And you start saying, God, I'm pointing it to you. And I'm believing you. Boom. And you start hitting. And let me tell you something. Every single target is going to be the breakthrough or the miracle you're believing for. Mine was what? Man, I needed to be healed from Hodgkin's lymphoma. Well, guess what? I was being stretched. But I kept pointing over to Jesus. I kept pointing to him. And let me tell you something. There are going to be times where you're going to miss. Because guess what? We all miss it. We all miss it. But I thought I, I did have faith, Pastor, and it didn't happen. No, it's not that it didn't happen. It's that you're not perfect. And sometimes we miss it. Like I've heard people say, well, God told me to open this business. But if we really go ahead and we really start making a spiritual assessment, we realize that, you know what? No, what you did is you manipulated your prayer and you convinced yourself that God told you when all along you weren't really asking God what he thinks. You were basically telling God what you already decided. Let's not be immature. It's like when people say, oh, God's telling me to leave the church, Pastor. <laughs> Dude, God didn't tell you to leave the church. What's wrong? You're crazy. Now, I get it. There are seasons where there's a transition. I get that. Don't get me wrong. I moved on from my church, okay? But, but I moved on 
because God called me, right? And then there's situations, so don't get, don't get funky weird on me. Don't send me an email, okay? But check this out. What do we do? We keep doing this. So every time you get stretched with a palm, just say, you know what? I am the bow and my faith, the just shall be. So I got to start learning how to take every single stretch and I'm going to say, boom. I'm going to keep hitting and hitting my target. Why? I have to put my eyes back on Jesus. Every time you're worried, you have to point your issue, your problem, your pain, your suffering. you got to point it back to Jesus because he can handle it. He can handle it. And don't get weird. I do actually do this. So don't, we're all good. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Quick, let's get out of here. You keep complaining, complaining, your spirit is going to be overwhelmed. God's saying, seek me first. Start seeking me first. What does that look like? You know what? Just daily, find, find a quiet time for you and God. And you open that word. And you just let the spirit of God speak to you. Because it's not by might. It's not by power. God says, it's by my spirit. And Jesus said, and the words I speak to you our spirit. So if you're always worrying, you'll never interpret the spirit of God. So what does God say? Don't worry about it. Come to me, all of you who are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. If today's message impacted you in any way, and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.